Okay, we are ready to go ahead and install our spark plug. The spark plug has a gap. You want to make sure that your gap is, oh, a little bit thicker than a, uh, a matchbook cover and not quite as thick as a credit card. Put your spark plug into the cylinder and slowly tighten it up. Be very careful, you do not want to cross thread it and strip the threads in the head. It should turn freely. Once you get it snug by hand, there I felt it stop. Go ahead and tighten it up just a little bit, not even not even a quarter of a turn, no more than that. You just want to get it just good, just, just snug, a little tight but not real tight because this is an aluminum head and uh, you'll, you'll strip the threads fairly easily. Now we are ready to mount the CDI. We're going to mount that here on the support tube here. That will allow it to go to the spark plug. We have the wires here. You have a blue wire and a black wire, and then you have the wires coming from the motor. You want to match the same color wires up to it. Let's go ahead and get that. Once again, we mount the blue to the blue, the black to the black. Push your insulators over it. Now we're ready to go ahead and mount it here at the top. Now your CDI, you can either mount it to the support tube or you can mount it to the down tube. You have a choice. Whatever looks better better for you and whatever uh, as well you need to keep your wires away from touching the motor or the the uh, the exhaust, the muffler, because it will burn your wires. We're going to tie wrap it here to the frame to keep things out of the way. You've got your mounting screw, your long uh, mounting screw. Push that through the CDI. You have your mounting plate. We're just going to get it started on there. A flat washer, a lock nut, or pardon me, a lock washer, and one of the nuts in the from the kit. Let's go ahead and put it over the, the mounting tube. Let's put our other screw in. Let's go ahead and push it through the mounting plate. A flat washer. Lock washer. And the hex nut. Okay, you can, as you can see, these screws are plenty long. We can go ahead and cut those uh, if you want. Cut some of the excess off. We'll go ahead and get it mounted first, then go ahead and cut it. All right, we've got that tight. Let's make sure that you remove the, uh, the nut from the uh, spark plug, otherwise your spark plug cap won't get on it won't go on properly. I have it pushed all the way down. I want to make sure that the the wire coming from the CDI doesn't rub against the cylinder, the head, or the exhaust. Let's go ahead and mount our muffler on it. I have the exhaust gasket in place. It's in good shape. Let's go ahead and put the muffler on. We have a flat washer, a lock washer, and we have one of the taller nuts. It's not a nylock nut, but with the washer, the lock washer in place will be in good shape. I've got it hand tight. Now we want to make sure that when, when our pedals rotate that they do not hit the muffler. Okay, I have plenty of clearance between the muffler and the, the, the pedal crank. Uh, if uh, sometimes it, it'll strike it, you may have to get a torch and heat the exhaust here and bend it in a little bit, but we're in good shape, so let's go ahead and tighten it up. You want to tighten up both sides, do it nice and slow, tighten it up together. You don't want to get one side real tight and leave the other side loose, it may uh, cause some issues. 
I've got this side snug. Let's go ahead and get this other side here snug too. I've got it fairly snug and I'm going to give it about a half a turn and about a half a turn on the other side. Alright, I'm going to give it about maybe another third of a turn on each side and that should have it pretty snug. It, it, it's fairly tight. You don't want to get it too tight, once again, because you may strip it. But we're in good shape. Everything looks good. I'm going to tie wrap my wires here. I've got one more thing I've got to do. I have the control wire from the uh, throttle grip. That's our kill switch. That is going to mount to our two wires here. It doesn't matter which one it goes to. If your wires are not long enough, you're going to have to cut them, get you some wire, and, and extend it make sure it works okay I've got plenty of uh, plenty of room so all I have to do now is tie wrap everything together I'm gonna reroute these here I've got them uh, over the cable in a manner that I don't like you wanna make sure that your insulators are over your wires and that your bare wires will not be touching or rubbing against the frame you can go ahead and put some electrical tape if you want on it or if you got shrink tubing and a heat gun you can do that route we're going to uh, tie wrap it uh, to the handlebar and we're going to make sure that we have a full range of motion with the handlebars and it's not going to put stress or uh, rip our wires out. But let's go ahead and go on to the gas tank. You have the four mounting studs here. Sometimes you may have an issue with your petcock interfering with the tube here or the tube interfering with the mounting of your petcock. Uh, I've had to, on some bikes, take a torch, heat the metal up, and take a pair of pliers and push it in and, and move the, uh, the, the support tube here, crush it in somewhat in order to get clearance. We've got a good fit here, so we don't have a problem. So let's go ahead and put our mounting plates onto the gas tank. I'm just going to put it on one side only right now. Put you a flat washer on each one a lock washer and start your nuts for it just get it started now let's go ahead and uh, put the gas tank on the tube then what we're going to do is we're going to bring our mounting plates over to the other side, push it up. We're going to go ahead and put our lock, our flat washer, our lock washer, and the nuts on. And then all we got to do is slowly tighten it up. You want to get your mounting plate evenly tight on both sides. You don't want to have one tight drawn all the way up to the tank and have the other side loose. You want to do it evenly. You want to do it slowly. Uh, you do not want to over tighten this. Take your time get it snug, slowly work it tight and get it right. Okay, once you've got your uh, your brackets tight on your, t on your gas tank, it's time to go ahead and run your fuel line. Your fuel line just simply pushes onto the petcock. If you don't have a good fit, you may want to get you a uh, hose clamp. It might recommend you do it anyways, but uh, quite often the fuel line is, is plenty tight. You never know what you're going to get in these kits. As far as the fuel line, this one here looks like it's not going to give me any problems whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and cut it about four inches down, about halfway down, and we're going to mount our fuel filter. Your fuel filter, the input is where you can see the, uh, the filter on the inside here. The, the fuel flows over the filter as opposed to inside of the filter where you can't see it. This way here you can see any stuff that gets uh, that, that's in there if it gets clogged. So that way uh, you want to see the flow here uh, go, go onto the outside of it here. Uh, basically you've got the cap here. The cap is going to be the outlet. So we're going to push this into your fuel line here. Make sure you push your fuel line all the way down onto the fitting. Now let's go ahead and measure this one up here as to how much room we need. You want to make sure that however you run your fuel hose, that your fuel hose does not touch your cylinder head. You're going to have problems. 
Don't do that. So let's push our fuel line onto the filter, the output of the filter. I don't have my gas tank completely tightened up yet, but I'll do that here in just a minute. But that's about where I want it to sit. I don't want it all the way up to where your gas tank is rubbing against the handlebars, so I have it back just a little bit. Here, that's going to be a good place for it. And I'm going to cut my fuel line right about there. Be sure and cut it straight. Don't cut it at an angle that may give you some issues. Slide it all the way down on the carburetor. It looks like we've got a good fit there, a good tight fit. So I don't need any hose clamps, but if check it. Make sure that it doesn't leak. If you think it's going to leak, put your hose clamp on it. My throttle cable has just a little bit of slack in it, so I'm going to just lightly pull it up to where I can feel that it, it, it's tight on the, the cable. I'm going to unscrew the adjuster here just a little bit. I've got it tight and then the stop nut holding the, uh, the adjuster tight. I'm now going to tighten the stop nut against the, the top cap of the carburetor. We've got that tight. You want to go through your bike from one end to the other. Make sure all your hardware is tight. Make sure you didn't forget anything. You don't want to over tighten your hardware, but you want to get it good and snug. I'm going to finish tightening up my tank. I'm going to put my tie wraps on. Then we're going to put our fuel oil mixture in it. Your fuel oil mixture for your break-in is going to be 16 to 1. That's 8 ounces of uh, two-stroke motor oil per gallon. And then after a full gallon of gas run through it, your motor will be broken in. Then you're going to switch to 30 to 1, which will be 4 ounces of oil to a gallon. So your break-in is 8 ounces of oil to a gallon, which is 16 to 1. Then 4 ounces to the gallon, which will be 30 to 1 approximately of your uh, two-stroke uh, oil to the gasoline. When you first put some gasoline in it, make sure your pet cock is off. In the off position here, off position is, is at a 90 degree angle to the, uh, the flow of the fuel and then straight up and down where the, the lever on your pet cock is in line with your uh, gas line here. That will be the on position. But turn it off. You're going to put just a little bit of gas in your gas tank because if it leaks, you don't want to be dealing with a lot of it here. Uh, check for leaks. Triple check for leaks. Let it sit for a little bit. Then you will open up your pet cock. Go ahead and let fuel go down into your carburetor. Uh, sometimes you may have a, like a lock in it of air and the fuel's not going into it. You may want to go ahead and pull your, your, uh, your fuel line off of the carburetor and let just a little bit of gasoline seep out and immediately put it back on. Wipe everything clean. Do not start your motor if you have gasoline on the engine. You're going to have problems. Alright, so let's go ahead. We're going to tighten up the hardware, check it out. We're going to put some gas in it and then I'll show you how to start it. It's fairly simple, the starting. Here is your choke on this particular carburetor. This one does not have a lever or a cable for the choke. It just has the lever on the carburetor itself. Up is the position that you'll use to choke it. So basically you'll have gas in it. You'll have your fuel turned on. You will move the choke lever in the up position and that blocks the air inlet and forces the motor to suck more gasoline into it. So you will pedal the bike. You'll release the clutch. That'll start the engine turning and you should hear a pop, 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 pop and the motor will, will, will be starting to run and at which time you will immediately push your choke down into the run position and feather your throttle. You'll, you'll, you'll hear the engine rev up a little bit and when you first start your motor it's going to be tight. It's not going to run that well. Give it a little while. Slowly work the throttle. Coax it to run and as your bike runs, the more your bike runs, the better it's going to run. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and start the bike up. I've actually run the bike a little bit. It runs good. I had some issues with the rear bearing. It still wobbled a little bit. I had to take the wheel off again, tighten the bearing up just a little bit more, get some of the play out of it. The rear wheel is now good and secure on the bike. I've put gas on it. I've made sure that there are no leaks. 
I've got the pet cock on. It's running uh, in a direct line with the fuel line. I'm going to pull the choke lever up. What that does is that, that closes off the air intake, causes the carburetor, causes the engine to suck more gas through the carburetor. That's what helps you get started here. So we're ready to start it. What we're going to do is pull in the clutch. When you pull in the clutch, the bike will move. When you release the clutch, it tries to turn the motor over. So we're gonna pull in on the clutch. We're gonna pedal the bike up to speed. We're gonna dump the clutch, and when we do, it's gonna start, uh, should start the motor up. Once you hear a few pops and you're, you're feathering your throttle, what you wanna do is when you start this bike, is just give the bike a little bit of gas on and off. You don't wanna give it a lot of gas. Uh, it's not gonna respond that way. It responds better to just little turns of the throttle to slowly bring the motor up. When I, I dump the clutch, start it going, I'll hear a few pops from the motor. I'll then go ahead and turn the choke off, continue to feather the throttle, and I'll bring the motor up to speed, and then it's happy motoring. So let's go ahead and start this. Okay, with this uh, bike here, I only have the coaster brake on it. You do have an additional brake I want to tell you about, and it's your kill switch. If you leave your clutch on, or leave the clutch out, you're cruising along, you want to slow down, hit your kill switch. Your kill switch is going to give you engine braking. You're still turning the motor, and the compression of the motor is going to give you some additional braking in addition to your coaster brakes. Then right before you come to a complete stop, if you want to keep the motor going, go ahead, release your kill switch. That'll start the motor again. Pull your clutch in, and you still have the motor running. Be careful. Watch out for cars, because they're not watching for you. Thanks. your motor started and you're at a complete stop you want to be sure and pedal before you try to re uh, release the clutch you'll burn your clutch up the motor doesn't have enough power doesn't have enough torque so you always want to make sure when when you're uh, slowing down and you want to start going again pedal it a little bit slowly release the clutch you'll get the feel of it nice slow turns on the throttle I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions, you can always email me. Leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Thank you for watching.